Well, the build-up to Nigeria's 2023 general elections is gathering momentum. The face is gradually coming out. Declarations of ambition are taking center stage and the hopeful has started work in earnest. Discussions over who becomes what in 2023 are beginning to take center stage and as expected, more aspirants have expressed interest in Nigeria's topmost office. Who will become Nigeria's next president? With the electoral amendment bill waiting in the corner, Nigerians are all expectant of what becomes of the polls. We're closer than ever to the 2023 elections, and that's our focus today on VSA. Welcome, I'm Sulaiman. Well, as Nigeria moves, moves closer to its 2023 elections, uh, some topics have taken the national space. Some of these topics are the Electoral Amendment Bill, which was rejected by the President and reintroduced by the National Assembly just today. The Senate has deleted the compulsory direct primary clause in the previous bill, leaving parties with the liberty to choose which approach they desire. Other topical issues are Nigeria's ruling party, the All Progressives Congress, the APC, and the claim of being Africa's biggest political party, its national convention, and the choice of candidates, and the new one, the vice president, whether he will run or not run. Now, the opposition is not without its challenges, also as it boasts of its potential to rule Nigeria again. Now, although the voter registration increasing and more Nigerians interested in national politics, it may just be time for some difference. I'm excited to have great Africans with us on this show. Joining me now is Elishama Ide, which is founder partnership for a new Nigeria development initiative. And pretty much later on the show, we'll be having Chima Naji, who is a legal practitioner, to look at this. And uh, very quickly here, uh, welcome and thanks for joining us uh, uh, Dr. Ide, and uh, quite a lot ha is happening. And I know when we talk about politics, we've seen new and interesting personalities throw their hearts in the ring for the presidency. Uh, Chukuka Monye, uh, quite a, a young Nigerian, is also there. And uh, there's another one, Hadija Okunulamidi, readily comes, you know, to mind. Now, how much of a chance do they stand uh, if you go back, because you were very, very active in the last election in 2019. What kind of leader should Nigeria be looking for in the coming election? Well, everybody should be welcome on board, um, but how much of a stand, uh, a chance to, do they stand? <laughs> it's not something I can really hmm. answer. We all know the Nigerian factor. We know that they are going to have a, a lot of um, hard time if they don't have the financial backing, because everything about election in Nigeria and with new faces coming in with new party structures that are not as big as the two major party structures, they are going to have a tough time in deterring. So, um, but that should not discourage anyone or anybody from coming on board because it's our nation, it's Nigeria, and we, you know, we are all stakeholders to make sure that um, our nation moves forward to 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 get to the Nigeria of our desired dreams. So um, yeah, they should come on board. But I didn't get your second question well, Suleiman. All right, okay. I, I was asking. I think you've uh, sort of answered it. It has to do with these young people coming on stream. But again, let, let's take you back to 2019, yeah? 2018, 2019. Uh, we had that conversation, and it has to do with some of the key things you've highlighted. Everyone is welcomed on board. But uh, the Nigerian factor, which you mentioned, is something that non-Nigerians watching uh, would like to uh, know more about. Now, let's start talking about the financial backing. How, how yes. big should the, uh, or how deep should that pocket of uh, a politician be before you vie for any political office? In Nigeria, that is major. That is key. 
that is everything. If you do not have the financial structure, you do not have the political um, godfathers, and you are not courageous to want to um, really go in for it the way they do in the Nigerian system, then it's going to be something very difficult. But I'm not going to discourage every, anybody because I'm one woman that have um, whatever I put my heart to do concerning any major um, issue, most especially when it comes to Nigeria or any other issue that I believe in. I believe in faith. And I also believe that no matter how thick um, you know, a prevailing uh, structure has been, there will always be a crop of new generation of people if they are determined enough, they can break down the corrupt system. There's a lot of corruption out there, especially in our political terrain. There's tradition and culture of giving money for anything you want to do that has to do with politics. And if you do not have the sort of money that the people demand, then uh, your chances are really very dim out there. What I think we need in Nigeria right now, in, in going forward, is a lot of education in the grassroots sector of the society for them to understand that this thing about, about politics is not about just having a quick fix. It's not about just uh, them giving you something to satisfy your immediate need to eat your immediate food or whatever you need at that moment. It is about your life, your total existence as a citizen of Nigeria. And we all need to come to a place of wanting to sacrifice to see the Nigeria of our dream emerge. If not, the cancawam of, um, uh, of deep-rooted culture of tradition of giving to the grassroots for them to support you, whether you are the right candidate or not, whether you are a chief or you are an arm robber and you just come into the terrain and say, you know what, I want to be president and you have the money to spend, then the people don't really care. They don't know, they don't, they don't care about your pedigree. They don't want to know where you're coming from. They don't ask questions. How did you, how did you make your money? What, what do you have to offer to the people? What is your passion? Um, what is the integrity behind this person that is saying, I'm coming for this office? Nobody asks questions, especially when they see money. It, it, it's, it's, a, it's a tough, it, it's a tough uh, ground to break right now in Nigeria. But like I said, if we do not start, if the few people that can be courageous enough, the next generation of Nigeria do not come in, especially the people that are saying we are the righteous people, we are the good people, we know what to do, and every other person is saying politics is dead sea, then it is the dirty people we are going to keep having in there. We just have to come out there and just keep breaking the ground, breaking the ground, breaking the ground, till it's softening up, softens up. And the sort of people we don't have out there will finally be pushed out. But if we do not make that attempt and keep, you know, pushing against the hard grounds, pushing against the hard grounds, then we are going to keep having dirty politicians out there to rule us in this nation. Well, I, I, know, I know you and your group, uh, the uh, Partnership for a New Nigeria Development Initiative have been speaking, enlightening Nigerians, but again, uh, what, what do you get when you speak to any of these audience, whether, you know, audiences, whether a women group or a young people group? Do you think Nigerians are ready for such a, a big change? Um, I, I, I must confess the hard reality, the truth, bitter, you know, the bitter truth, the reality that we are faced in uh, trying to educate the people through Partnership for a New Nigeria Devel Development Initiative. They still don't understand why you are talking politics with, without money. They still don't understand that. You want to talk politics? Have you seen the Godfathers? Are you going to give us some money for us to even sit down to hear what you got to say to us? That's why I'm saying it's going to take a couple of years of intense education to, you know, create serious awareness to the grassroots. Because at the end of the day, politics is from the grassroots. And the people that are had, you know, had it in this uh, political issue when the leaders come in are still these people in the grassroots because they are the ones, the hardcore politicians we go out there, use, promise them all sorts of things because most of, most of them are illiterate, they are uneducated, they are hungry, they are poverty stricken. Just tell them, I will give you this money now, no, no, no. Just gather the crowd. We need the numbers. Just support us go out there, sing slogans, say good things about us, 
and because they are hungry they are hungry so they don't care just they just want the money so it's going to be a consistent consistent and continuous education of the grassroots to let them understand that this thing that, that is called politics is about your life really mm. and you must not mortgage it just for a, a you know a pot of porridge you should be able to understand what we are going for, the sort of leaders that we are going for, what would better your life from where you are presently. Because right now, Nigeria, unfortunately, is one of the, is one, it has been, you know, uh, um, established that we have poverty ratio in Nigeria that is almost <laughs> engulfing 90% of the population, living in extreme abject poverty. So, and these are the same sort of people the politicians are going to go and beat, confuse their mind again, with just giving them something for the moment, and just to get them in here. Any politician that is not thinking about the next, next generation, thinking about how to get rid of poverty in the land, thinking about how to put basic food on the table for every Nigerian. Basic, we're not asking for too many things. Can we just even start? from the basic amenities in the nation, take care of food, take care of um, uh, housing, take care of medicals, and take care of basic in infrastructures, like you know our medical needs and things like that. If we, and light, most importantly light, because without light, our economy will not improve. If we can just have a sincere leader that we come in, and before we can know that this person is sincere, what is your, um, can, can we just have, a, you know, a history of this person in the little way that they have contributed, even in their small locality before now? What have they been doing? How have they been impacting the people? What is their contributions before now? And the people that are coming on board and the people that the people are just shouting about, have they contributed so far to how, to the present state of the nation, good or bad? We have to begin to bring these conversations to the table. We have to begin to analyze the people that are saying they want to rule us. We have to face reality. If not, Nigeria might not survive in the next couple of years. These are the bitter truth and uh, realistic conversations we have to begin to have right now as Nigerians. And I'm just going to appeal to sincere, rich, wealthy Nigerians that are out there that if you see true change agents and that you know that they have the pedigree in terms of compassion, in terms of integrity, in terms of you know, passion, courage, vision, judgment, empathy, and emotional intelligence, and you have noticed them that they are out there. Please kindly reach out and try to support these people because a, you know a crop, crops of leaders that are coming in and not thinking of the next generation, our children. Because if we're only thinking of ourselves and what we can put in our belly for now and the, 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 the you know looting the system, amassing wealth, you know politicians coming in amassing wealth for themselves and not thinking of the future of our children, what are the next generation going to you know inherit from us? What are they going to inherit in terms of a nation? Any leader that is coming in and don't have plans for the next generation. If we are talking about the next generation, we are talking about the future of our children. Then well, those well, leaders... Let, 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 me, let, me, let me come in here. Uh, uh, apologies, yeah. uh, button in. Let me come in here. Your leadership, your leadership coach. And uh, uh, perhaps let's start asking some of these key questions uh, that will help uh, guide Nigerians as they work towards this election. Uh, what sort of leaders or leadership qualities should uh, uh, an average Nigerian voter be looking out uh, from, you know, in the eyes parents? Okay. First and foremost, I would say we should look out for a leader that has, in, that has integrity. It all begins with integrity, but it doesn't end there then we need a passionate leader, a leader that has the love of country. When you have the love of country, sincere love of country, you have the love of the people, not the love of power. That is different. Some people just have the love of power. They have lust for power. They just want to go there and take power. But at the end of the day, they have no vision. They have no compassion. They have no integrity. We don't need those sort of leaders anymore. We need leaders with integrity, 
We need, we need passionate leaders. We need courageous leaders necessary to make the difficult decisions when facing conflicts and mediating through adversity. Because Nigeria is so uh, volatile right now. Um, we are experiencing so much ethnic uprising. We have the issue of Boko Haram program. We have the issue of kidnapping. We have the issue of uh, 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 farmers clashing with uh, S-men. So many things going wrong, kidnapping, almost, I mean, they, they almost uh, rather label us a terrorist country. We can see that on, you know, you are showing that already. So any leader that is coming in must be a courageous leader that will be able to take decisive decisions, you know, through difficult situation with all the conflicts we are facing and medi mediating through all of these adversities that we are facing in the nation. Then we need a visionary leader. Nigeria needs a visionary leader right now. A leader most, first and foremost, that must also consider gender equation balance. That must be top priority of that leader's agenda because we need a system where more women should be injected into every echelon of authority, every office from the president down to every uh, seat of authority in the nation because there must be gender balance. There's a reason why God placed man and woman on earth. It is for uh, fertility, it is for fruitfulness, and it is for productivity. And they must come on board equally. And it starts from the family, from the family, it pours into the community, from the community, it pours into the society. It is an equal responsibility. So when you have a society that one gender is dominating in high ratio, the other gender, you are killing fertility, you are killing fruitfulness for that nation, and you are killing productivity because it is a natural force that Almighty God has put together. And that is the only way an environment can thrive. That is the only way a, a society can thrive. That is the only way a community can thrive. So we need a leader that will con consider all of this. We need a leader that would, you know, have good sense of judgment of the sort of situation Nigeria is presently facing. We are facing too many issues in the nation, security breakdown, poverty, um, infrastructural breakdowns. Our economy is down to nothing right now. Naira has been, uh, the, 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 the strength of Naira is, has really, 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 really gone down. How can you have a nation where our one, uh, one dollar, our Naira is almost 600 Naira to one dollar. This is alarming. So any leader that is coming on board has so much work to do. I mean, the next leader that will take over Nigeria, they really have to come in believing and coming with a good sense of judgment that they are really coming to make a change because there is nothing to loot anymore in Nigeria. Well, uh, well, well uh, now it takes us to the, the very first step to producing yes. that leader, and it has to do with uh, yes. the primary elections. Uh, and for the bulk yes. percentage of Nigerians, uh, people are asking, how can they be a part of it? Because that is a primary, uh, I mean, that is a party affair. When you speak to these uh, yeah. women and young Nigerians, uh, does it also include uh, you know, some ways where they can plug into some of these political parties so that they can start effecting changes as highlighted by you from within such political parties? Yes, I will encourage as many people that are interested right now to join any approved political party on ground, even if it is PDP and APC. If that is the only two parties that are on ground right now that the... Um, Electoral Commission is approving. We have no choice because I even have an understanding right now, and I know that they are already going to cancel a lot of all of the other parties. I know they are already in the Supreme. Supreme INEC is already in the Supreme Court trying to do that, and the SAT was it just a week ago concerning that. So at the end of the day, we might still just be left with 
APC and PDP and maybe one or two other um, new party. So whatsoever parties the Electoral Commission approves for us to be the vehicle to for us to uh, run for election in 2023. I will advise as many Nigerians that want to run, and I'm going to, <coughs> excuse me, going to encourage new faces to come into the terrain because if everybody keeps running away, who is going to make a change? Who is going to make a difference? Who is going to, you know, inject new ideas and all of these things that we are complaining about? Who is going to come in and just be bold enough to come and be a radical influence in the system? So if it is that we're going to these two other political parties or any other one that is approved, let us go in there and just begin to go in with these new ideas of trying to make a, you know, develop a new nation. Let, let, let me take you back to one of the key things uh, you, you, you mentioned earlier, and it has to do with uh, gender equality, uh, politically speaking, seeing more women come into politics, which is another area I know uh, you and your group have always you know, campaigned about. How can, yes. how can Nigeria, uh, because we've seen uh, some you know, amount of uh, increase in women participation in the country, politically speaking. Uh, we have uh, women now as senators, uh, more in the House of Representatives. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But what more can Nigeria do to encourage especially young you know, women to get into politics? Yeah. Yeah, somebody like me and a whole lot of um, most of other women, we have been doing a lot of seminars, programs, in different in the different spheres of our influence to try to encourage as many women to come on board, you know, as many women that are out there to come on board. And I must also uh, point this out that I believe my coming out in 2019 actually encouraged a lot of women. A lot of them have reached out to me, and I know some of them that would never, ever, ever have thought of politics in the first place, be became more aware after I came out and said, well, if Elishama can go out there boldly, then I can. So I'm going to um, encourage as many women out there, you know, in their communities, in their localities, in their states, wherever you are, just join from your, the world level, your local government, and be part of this change that we're all clamoring for in Nigeria. Um, like I said, we have been creating a lot of awareness in the different spheres of influences that we have in all of the different platforms that we have under Partnership for Nigeria Development Initiative and under also my ministry in the social spiritual sphere. You know, as, as a clergywoman, um, I also have a large influence of followers, you know, women that we train in leadership. And we are also trying to encourage all of them to just be out there that Nigeria belongs to every one of us, no matter the religion, no matter the ethnic group, no matter the locality, we must all be vying mm. to want to see a new Nigeria of our dreams emerge mm. because we need to fight for the sort of Nigeria we want to see and the sort of Nigeria we want to be for our children. That Art. is really key. Before I let you go, before I let you go, tell us more quickly here, if you can, uh, about the, your your organization, Partnership for a New Nigerian Development Initiative, so that uh, if it's, uh, so that young Nigerians can actually have more than enough to plug in uh, in terms of sensitization, uh, especially towards uh, this coming election. Okay, even before I joined the race in 2019 to run for the presidential office, you know, uh, vying for the presidential office, we've always had partnership for a new Nigeria development, development initiative since 2009. And the idea of this initiative is to try to encourage as many people that want a new Nigeria, a new Nigeria away from what we have been experiencing before now, a new crop of people that genuinely have the interests of Nigeria at heart, that loves the nation, that loves the people, that have empathy, that have compassion, that, you know, we even sacrifice themselves and run around for people to join forces with them, to sacrifice their, their lives, their resources, 
and everything that they believe in for Nigeria to see the Nigeria of our dream emerge. And what I, I have been doing before then, even before I ran for the government, and I'm still doing now, is to look out for such Nigerians, encourage such Nigerians, but I would rather the young generation comes up, truly, because I, from our generation backwards, um, it will be so hard to change their mindset. But if young people start coming on board, male, female, you know, and and they want to see a, a true, a, you know, a new Nigeria image, a true Nigeria of our dreams, the way we want it to be, a Nigeria that functions well, a Nigeria without corrupt leaders, a Nigeria that lead, we will have transformational leaders, leaders that will go into office thinking of the people, understanding that they are there for service. They have been elected to serve the people and they are for the people and they have been elected by the people. That it is not about them. It is not about them. All it right, is for yeah. the people. We are willing to support such people, create awareness concerning their campaign and encourage as many people hmm. in that, you know, uh, sphere okay. to be part of the change well, well, I think, I think we, we're, we're out of time. I'd like to thank you for being such a nice company, uh, Alicia Maide, and I hope to, to, to have you more on the program, especially as uh, we look towards uh, the coming elections. Many thanks for your time. Thank you so very much, Suleiman Alide. I enjoyed being with you here tonight. Thank you for having me. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you too. And God bless you.